This presentation introduces ideas about polar molecules. By the end of the presentation, you should be able to decide whether, mole whether a molecule has an overall permanent dipole and can be described as a polar molecule or whether it's a non-polar molecule. By now, you should be able to look at a molecule like the one drawn here and decide if there are any polar bonds present. Why don't you pause the video at this point and mark on the partial charges. Hopefully you decided there was a delta plus on the carbon and a delta minus on the chlorine. In order to decide whether this molecule has an overall permanent dipole, whether we can call the molecule as a whole a polar molecule, we need to look at the molecule in its 3D form. So here's the same molecule drawn in its 3D form. The decision as to whether it's a polar molecule involves us deciding if the centre of delta plus charge in the molecule is superimposed on the centre of delta minus charge in the molecule. Let's unpack what that means. Superimposed simply means in the same place as. And when we talk about the centre of charge, we mean the central point of all of that type of charge, wherever it is in the molecule. Putting it in the context of this molecule, there is only one delta plus charge. So the centre of positive charge is right here on the carbon. Again, there's only one negative charge. So the centre of negative charge is out here on the chlorine. These two centres are clearly not superimposed on each other. They're not in the same place. This means they don't cancel out. So overall, this molecule does have a centre of delta plus and a centre of delta minus in two separate locations. It is a polar molecule. It does have an overall permanent dipole. Let's look at another molecule, the water molecule this time. If we mark on the partial charges, we'll put delta plus on the hydrogens and delta minus on the oxygens. So it is a molecule with polar bonds. Remember, to decide if it has an overall permanent dipole, we need to draw the molecule in its 3D shape. And water has a bent or V-shaped structure. As before, we need to decide if the centre of delta plus in the molecule is superimposed on the centre of delta minus or not. Remember, superimposed simply means in the same place as. The centre of delta minus is fairly obvious. There is only one delta minus on the oxygen here. What about the centre of delta plus? Well, the centre of the charge is simply the point in the molecule which is equidistant, the same distance from both of the delta plus charges and that's going to be here halfway between the two oxygens. So it's clear to see that in this molecule the centre of delta plus is not superimposed on the centre of delta minus. The two charges don't cancel out therefore so this is a polar molecule. The molecule as a whole does have a permanent dipole. Here's a third example, drawn already with the partial charges marked on. Remember, again, we need to think about it in its 3D form in order to make the decision about it being a polar molecule or not. So here it is, drawn in 3D. The centre of delta plus is relatively simple. There is only one delta plus on the carbon in the middle. And so our centre of delta plus is right there. What about the centre of delta minus? This might be a little bit difficult to visualise for you, but there is only one point which would be an equal distance from each of those delta minus charges. And it is slap bang in the middle on the carbon 
the same place as the delta plus. This means the two charges now, the delta minus and the delta plus centres, are super superimposed on top of each other and will cancel out. So although this molecule has polar bonds individually, as a whole we say it's a non-polar molecule. And what you might write down is that due to the symmetry of the molecule, the centre of delta plus is superimposed on the centre of delta minus, causing the charges to cancel out, giving a non-polar molecule. Here's a final example, just to show you the most subtle aspects of this idea. Looking at this molecule, it's very similar to the previous one, and it might be easy to jump to the conclusion that this will not be a polar molecule. As before, we need to draw it in its 3D form to make a sensible decision about this. So here it is, drawn out 3D. Like the last molecule, there can only be one place the centre of delta plus could be, on the carbon, where the only delta plus charge is. What about the centre of delta minus? Well, if all the delta minuses were the same size, delta minus would be centred on the carbon, like the delta plus. However, fluorine, remember, is the most electronegative element. More electronegative than chlorine. So although the F's and the CL's both have delta minus charges, the delta minus on the F's will be slightly stronger than the delta minus on the CL's, because the F's will be pulling the bonding electrons closer to them than the CL's are pulling their bonding electrons towards themselves. This means that the centre of delta minus will actually be pulled slightly off-centre towards the fluorines. So, in this case, the centre of delta minus is not superimposed on the centre of delta plus. The charges won't cancel out, and so this is a, pol a polar molecule. To finish with, here's a question for you. There's two molecules shown here. One of them is a non-polar molecule. One of them is a polar molecule. Decide which one is which and explain your reasoning.